Well, I've been in lighting almost 20 years now, but when I started out, I was actually from the southeast. I went to Auburn, and my degree is actually aerospace engineering. I kind of ended up in marketing, and the creativity and the, the strategy and the challenge of that was a lot of fun. And then it was a, uh, a chance encounter one day. I met uh, Harry Callick, who was the founder and owner of Calco Lighting many years back. He asked me to come uh, work for him and check out his uh, operation and see what I could do in terms of marketing. And then I just kind of found I had kind of a passion for the design side and kind of grew up lighting. And five years ago when I was about to turn 40, I kind of woke up in a cold sweat and figured I ought to try my own try my own thing. I had several mentors, including Harry Callick, who's now actually a partner in Verilus. You know, in talking to all the mentors at the time when I was working on a business plan, you know, they, they caution you that you, you know, whatever you think in terms of money or time, you should, you know, double or triple it because there's so many things you, you don't expect or that you're not, you know, especially being fairly green as far as starting a company and running a company on my part. But but the one thing no one cautioned you to plan for was kind of the fun economic situation that we ended up in in 2007-8 and still kind of are to some extent. But, so I laugh when people ask me, what did your original business plan look like? And I laugh and say, well, it was, you know, 80 pages of, of awesomeness that has no bearing on reality. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's been a fun journey, but, you know, there were uh, there were times when I think I was just too pig-headed to uh, kind of let go, like October of 2008 through March of 2009. I think probably most lighting companies, if you talk to them, they'll probably have experienced the same thing. They're just, the phone didn't ring. There was no, <laughs> there was either no need for it or everybody was so scared they weren't going to spend money on anything. So it was, that was a, that was a fun time. You know, I tend to think it was more, I just, I really believed in what we were up to. And we were just getting, you know, we only had a couple of years in our existence at that point, but we had ironed out a lot of the kinks in terms of production. We had our own production shop up and running by that point in the Philippines and had taken control over uh, everything, actually, from design through production to how we market it, how we package it, how we ship it. Originally, when we started, I was having other companies make everything, and that was kind of a nightmare, and that was a huge lesson learned that, you know, if you have a particular vision and you're really keen on that, you kind of have to have control from the start to finish. And the only way to do that is to, to make it yourself and have your own production shop. And whether it be, you know, using recycled materials, which we like to do, or really more on the design side, just kind of doing more fun, modern, slightly unexpected, you know, kind of quirky looks that are not, not what you see everywhere else. The only way to do that and guarantee you have good quality uh, is really to do it yourself. When I grew up, we actually, you know, in school celebrated Earth Day and actually had recycling in school. You know, my parents' generation didn't understand that. They were frugal, but they didn't they didn't get the concern about the environment and, and where we were heading. I mean, I think I was kind of probably part of that early generation that actually kind of had it ingrained in us to some extent. When we started Very Loose, we didn't necessarily promote it or talk about it. At the time, I, I, had, I had done some work for uh, Lithonia Lighting, which is a big uh, energy-efficient lighting manufacturer. They make mainly fluorescents for, like, recessed troppers, and they also do some decorative fixtures. And it was a tough sell to make a pretty light that was energy efficient that people really wanted to buy. So I just sort of kind of mistakenly, I guess, assumed that uh, even though we were using recycled materials, people weren't necessarily going to care that much about it. And over the next two or three years, as people kind of found out that's what we did, we started to realize that people really did care. And that was uh, kind of, I mean, it's a good selling point. It wasn't the primary selling point. If you didn't if you didn't fall in love with the design, I guess it doesn't necessarily matter what it's made of. But it does kind of help tell the story. And then it's also interesting because people kind of mistakenly assume that if you use recycled materials, it's automatically going to be more expensive. And it's not necessarily. It just requires a little more thought and planning up front when you're, when you're working with it to make sure you can, can do it and, and keep the price reasonable. We introduced a couple of uh, small groupings last market. One is uh, called Masquerade. It's sort of inspired like by kind of like a Zorro mask or a, kind of a more formal mask kind of if you turn it sideways. We have a number of new pieces to kind of coordinate with that look. Cage frames, kind of something I've always enjoyed playing with. We have 10 or so designs that kind of use that look. Not industrial in the sense. Cage frame is essentially like that, kind of like that shop light that your dad or granddad may have had laying around that had the cage around it to protect the bulb. That was also kind of a big look in the 60s, kind of adapted to a decorative look. And that look is sort of 
been coming back a little bit over the last year, but we took it kind of more to a traditional lighting shape made out of kind of construction. So it's a neat piece of, uh, we called that group clout just so that we could literally say we have clout.